Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there. Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next, and if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Now, one thing you can always count on in life, aside from taxes and dying and all that sort of thing, is that uh, some things will be a lesson in humility. So uh, my DIY tall valve cover, uh, apparently I didn't build it as well as I should have, and it leaks. So probably big surprise, but uh, there are a few things that I did wrong in this. Uh, primarily the main one being that I uh, used the wrong kind of brazing rod. So we're going to go ahead and redo this with the correct brazing rod, which is nickel silver, and the right flux. And we're going to cut this valve cover again. And I've purchased a new valve cover and we'll put the power by forward top into the new valve cover we're buying, but we're going to do it opposite how we did it here. In this case, it went over, but we need it to go under. Now, as I was saying before our uh, freight train rolled by here and made a bunch of racket, one of the things that I, uh, in hindsight, it seems obvious now, but at the time, uh, I thought that by brazing this really good all the way around, that it would seal it, and it was easier for me to take and put the uh, bottom piece inside the top piece. Well, unfortunately, that's it leaks so uh not not a lot but it's you know if you leave the motor running for a while you'll see oil and can't have that so and also the uh, i had thought that using the later model bottom half of the valve cover which is indeed a little bit thicker and a little bit more sturdy uh, still not really that sturdy, so uh, this new valve cover, we will use the majority of the bottom of it, and we'll cut it, cut the top off of it, and we will take this top piece, which has the power by Ford on it, uh, which you apparently can't get those anymore, and what we'll do is run it up through the bottom to the height that we want and then we will braise it on the outside and that way uh, it's kind of like a roof when you do shingles on a roof you know you always overlap them uh, the way that the water is going to run and again in hindsight <laughs> that would seem obvious but uh, in this case, I thought I could make it work, but I was wrong. So what I'm going to do also uh, this time is I'm going to bolt the new setup onto the head uh, while I am brazing it to uh, keep from warping. I would have thought that as thick as this bottom rail is, that it wouldn't warp with uh, the temperatures associated with brazing, but as you can see, uh, it warped. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, additionally, the new valve cover, instead of the lip, uh, let's see if I can get you to where you can see this, instead of the lip curling up, on the, uh, the new valve cover, it's like the original one, the 82 version. It comes out and 
uh, bends curves down. And what we're going to do with that, that makes it a lot easier. I went ahead and started on it. It's not near finished yet, but uh, this is uh, this is like eighth inch plate steel, and we'll make a uh, kind of like a valve cover hold down. Uh, and what that'll do, since the valve cover is real thin here and is very susceptible to it dimpling right around the bolt the stud holes or bolt holes. Uh, what this will do is this will uh, spread the, the clamping force uh, around the entire perimeter of the valve cover, you know, a lot better than just a, a little wing or a big washer or anything like that. So that's my plan. Now, uh, this time also, uh, I'm going to Instead of trying to do this with a sawzall, um, I have access to a uh, large bandsaw, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, to this uh, other workshop, and I'm going to cut this on a bandsaw. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to kind of jig everything up a little bit and make a guide and I'll probably have this side uh, down and guide against this side and then you know the bandsaw will go ahead and make the cut and it'll be nice and straight and smooth and I'll just have to shim under here to make it to where it's even with this and that way our cut is straight vertically and not kicked one way or the other. Okay, so I am back. Now, as you can see, I've got this valve cover uh, sawn. Let's cut the top off. <clears throat> And once our new valve cover gets here, we'll do the same to it, and then we'll piece the two together and uh, braise them up. Now you can see what I did here, and uh, just kind of screwed the valve cover to this piece of wood, and that way we have something nice and smooth to guide against when we're going through the bandsaw and uh, you can see here where you know basically what we did was is we clamped a piece of bar stock down to the table of the bandsaw and put it in the position obviously where we wanted to make our cut <clears throat> and then the wood will run against the guide and not all this irregular stuff up here you know and the height of this wood raises the valve cover up out of the way enough to clear the piece of bar stock and uh, i've got a i took a picture of it while i was there and i'll let you have a look at it uh, as i said when the new valve cover gets here it's due to be here tomorrow We'll do the same with it, and <clears throat> it'll actually be a lot easier because, you know, I've already gone through the, uh, the wood here, so that, that'll make it a lot easier. Uh, metal cutting bandsaw blade, you know, uh, it's a little slow going through a hard piece of wood like this. But <clears throat> now what we can do is we'll go and uh, what I can do is I can fix some of the irregularities that were in this valve cover. Like um, there's a, uh, this piece right, this portion right here is dented in a bit. We can push that back out. And there's some stuff here that, uh, you know, we can smooth out a bit. And then I think there was, yeah, there was a little tiny uh, imperfection up here. Uh, you know, a little spot putty will take care of that. 
And then what I'll do is, once I get it sanded down real good and primed, then this time I think rather than try and freehand the paint, um, I'll just uh, lay my painter's tape across and cut it out with a, an X-Acto knife. And uh, that will I'll make my lines a little sharper and uh, make it look a little better, I think. And, uh, you know, other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. And the other cool bit is that uh, um, I'm not sure if I cut this too low or not, but uh, <clears throat> I guess anything's better than nothing. I can use this, uh, what's left of this bottom piece here to uh, when I'm adjusting the valve. So kind of like a, you know, beheaded uh, valve cover there and we'll have oil running all over the place which doesn't do me much good now because I've already adjusted the valves but anyway so uh, now let me show you what where <laughs> you know where you think you got it and where you got a good braze in there but uh, I actually missed a missed a bunch of spots and but because of the way I put it together um, to where I push the top por portion down inside or outside, I'm sorry, of the bottom, you know, you're trying to braise inside there and you can't really see very good at what you're brazing. So, and <clears throat> like I said, the principle with the roof and shingles, you know, you lap everything the way your water runs. And this was just a, you know, it was an accident waiting to happen. So, but fortunately, it's not a huge, hairy deal. But, and the other thing was, is that uh, it was a bit difficult to braise because, uh, come to find out, I was using the wrong brazing rod. You'll notice that the material let me get this out from under here and get this to where you can see it better and let's see here no if you can see this very well but it's kind of like a brass or bronze uh, brazing rod there which is your typical brazing rod that I'm you know used to seeing forever and ever amen but uh, I'm obviously I'm not a welder. So I didn't know that when you're doing thin sheet metal like this, they say the best thing to use is a uh, nickel silver rod. I don't know if you can, you know, we can see that very well, if it'll focus or not. But anyway, it's uh, rather than being a, a brass or a bronze rod, uh, the rod has a high nickel and silver content. So uh, that is supposed to braise a whole lot better and flow better when you have the, the flux in there and everything's nice and clean. So that's going to be it for this short video. Uh, stay tuned and once I get uh, my new valve cover, um, I'll do another little segment where uh, I show you how I'm putting it together and, and <laughs> correctly this time. <laughs> and uh, we'll, uh, you know, hopefully do better and it won't leak. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like what you see. And uh, feel free to, you know, post uh, comments in the, down below. Uh, I welcome all comments, uh, good, bad, or otherwise, you know, constructive criticism. If you see me doing something wrong, feel free to call me out. Uh, I firmly believe that uh, uh, the last person <laughs> that walked on water uh, left us a long time ago. So, uh, you know, I don't claim to be perfect. And, you know, I'm learning too. So, uh, learn as we go. But, uh, anywho... We will talk at you later. Stay tuned.